The Ironman European Tour makes four stops on the British Isles in 2011. And here at the halfway stage, we've already seen some amazing stories and races at Wimbledon and Bolton. But there are two Celtic additions to the calendar this year, and with a trip to Wales still to come, it's time for the first ever Ironman event on this majestic island. Welcome to Ironman 70.3 Ireland. Salt Hill is the departure point for the challenge and early in the morning the 2,000 competitors arrive and set up for the journey ahead. The entry list includes Irish triathletes hungry for this class of event to come to their shores and others from around the world eager to take on the new course. There's a strong field of pro men who will have enjoyed the Irish welcome before the race but will face an Irish challenge from Owen Cummins during it. Yeah, it's a brilliant course and it's a great setup here. I don't think Ireland has seen anything like this before, so hopefully it'll be a great day. Only a small fraction of pros and amongst the age groupers who will be facing down the waves of Galway Bay on a breezy swim is actor and boys' own band member Keith Duffy. He's completed marathons in the past but has had to increase his training efforts for this race in which he'll be raising funds for Irish Autism Action, a very personal challenge for him with his daughter affected by the condition. I've done a couple of triathlons but to do it at, at, at this extreme, this level, I'm not used to that at all. The triathlons that I took part in this year, the weather was worse than this and the sea was worse than this so I'm used to that kind of weather. I've never done it in nice weather. And this one unfortunately wouldn't be any different. The pros would set off first, a few looking apprehensively out to sea, and with the start approaching, let's join your race commentator Patrick Winterton for a closer look at the course and the contenders. This is the moment that many of the athletes have been thinking about for many weeks. As as it will be now at this stage. <laughs> There's no wimping out at this stage, says Owen Cummins. He's absolutely right. Just a few minutes before the start of this 70.3, it is, of course, the half Ironman distance. The only difference here is that they've shortened the swim to a 1,000 metres because of the weather conditions. Now, that will suit many of the athletes, but one who won't be too happy with that is Rachel Joyce, who led out of the water at the World Championships at Kona. She likes a good, long, hard swim to gain some sort of an advantage before the bike. It's a kind of a real strength kind of power course. It's not very technical, and um, I'm not the best technically on the bike, so point me in the right direction and I'll turn the pedals so it kind of suits me. I think it's um, it's going to be a really good run course. We're going right through the old city quarters. I think that builds a really good atmosphere as well as being able to see where um, my competition are. I know there's some really quick runners. Uh, I know Lucy Gossage did a really quick run and a half Ironman so it'll be good to be able to see, see whereabouts she is. Well, Gossage finished an impressive third at the 70.3 UK, but she'll be well aware that Joyce was fifth at Kona. Rachel is a phenomenal athlete from what I've seen. Of her. I've never raced her, um, but this is why I decided to jump up to race pro to race, you know, race the big guns and, and see how I feel. Hopefully she won't embarrass us too much. I don't think any of the other girls will get close to her either. Um, who, know, you know, who knows what will happen in the, on the day? Um, yeah, I'll just go as hard as I can and enjoy it, hopefully. <laughs> All the pros now lined up on Ladies Beach, ready to head out into Galway Bay and then head across to Palmer's Rock Slipway, where they'll be getting out of the water, ready for T1. Mike Agros is one of the favourites. There he is from Switzerland. 30 different nationalities represented. And what a wonderful crowd have turned out, creating a superb atmosphere. And it's a blistering start. Agros is in there. Cummins of Ireland certainly looking for a good start. And on the far side, that looks like Sean Donnelly. He sounds as though he comes from Ireland, but actually he's German and has got a clean start. He should be able to stick with the leading group. Now, just remember, all the women in the blue hats, the men are in red. Simko on the near side from Slovakia, certainly the strongest of uh, the Slovakians here today. Difficult swimming conditions, you can see just how the technique has to change. Owen Cummins there nearest the camera at the moment almost dolphin-like as he works his way through the little waves heading out into the bay. So important to get a good start and 
Dominic Berger's got one. He's a man who's recently moved up the distance, looking for success now at 70.3. My swim should be perfect, and I, yesterday I had a look on the bike course. It's also very nice. The landscape is, is perfect, and yeah, I think it's going to be a, a very fast course. Yeah, I think there are quite a lot of strong athletes here. Berger had started well in third place here, but it was Owen Cummins leading them all in the crystal clear but choppy waters of Galway Bay. The Irishman was first out, with Berger dropping to fifth. But as the Austrian had said, there were a lot of strong athletes here and Cummins soon lost his lead to Sean Donnelly. The shortened swim meant it was close at the front and Slovakian Pavel Simko and Berger were next in a high tempo transition. Donnelly kept the pressure on Cummins all through T1 with Swiss Mike Agros in third. The 56-mile bike course may have been dampened, but the crowd's spirit certainly hadn't been, and they roared Cummins on, willing him to go as well on land as he had in the water. Rachel Joyce had led the women out of that part and was first onto the bike. But Lucy Gossage, if she knew about it, would have been happy with the news she was only 90 seconds behind as she started her bike stage. Meanwhile, the waves of age groupers were completing the swim. Not iron distance today, but cold as brass for some. I started training about six months ago. I got swimming lessons in April because I couldn't swim. Um, the swimming won't be very strong, it won't be very quick, but I'll finish it. The cycling, I went off cycling in, in the Alps. I cycled from Geneva to Monte Carlo on another uh, uh, charity event that I did. So I've got the, the time in my legs. and I've, um, I've ran the London Marathon and the New York Marathon before, so... It's putting the three together today that's going to be difficult. I think I'll get through the swim, I'll get through the cycle. I think the, the legs are going to be sore on the run. The swim was hard. The sea was very rough. Very, very rough. What's the temperature like? It's just, the, the temperature's fine. It's about 14 or 15 degrees. I'm going to get on the bike now and enjoy myself and look at the beautiful scenes of Ireland. Like everyone else, he was safely away on the bike stage where those beautiful scenes of Ireland were still beautiful, just wetter than usual. The group at the front of the race was still a closely matched six with Donnelly in the spotlight, which is where we rejoin the action with Patrick Winterton. Not surprisingly, all those who came out in the first group after the swim are now grouped together, Donnelly leading. We've got Cummins in second place, coming up on the near side with a blue helmet. That's Mike Agros of Switzerland, a good start from him. And he's certainly one to look out for today. And he started very, very aggressively on this 90-kilometre bike ride. The 33-year-old mechanic from Switzerland's come here with a specific mission. One swim in the first group. No, in the front, just first group, and after I start on the bike, the full, full, because my, for me, my bike is not good for this year, and uh, for um, my next race is Ironman Hawaii, and uh, tomorrow just one test for my power on the bike. There's Dominic Berger. Now he knows he needs a lead of about eight or nine minutes over this man Mike Agros if he's going to stand a chance of winning today but Agros as he promised has started aggressively Dominic Berger testing him out well he's pushing a big gear on those disc wheels remember 90 kilometers the distance and most of the climbing done in the early stages the first 10 miles generally uphill and then it's undulating all the way back to the start point and of course T2 the second transition where they switch to running Owen Cummins what can the Irishman do today there are certainly going to be great crowds in all the towns that they go through Agros having none of Dominic Berger's cheek he's gone back into the front and pushing the pace once again that was the decisive move from Agros 
Soon the others had nothing to see up the road apart from the rain in their eyes. And home favourite Owen Cummins was struggling to get a grip on bottles at the feed stations. But Mike Agros was all smiles. For me, it's not different. Cold or too hot, uh, just a rest and uh, no, yeah, just in the head, the difference. All according to the plan, he ploughed on alone, just as women's leader Rachel Joyce was doing, though the day hadn't quite unfolded as expected for the favourite. I could tell it was windy as soon as I got up, so I wasn't too surprised when they said for safety reasons they were going to shorten the swim, although I was a bit disappointed about that. I, I didn't quite get the lead that I would have would have hoped for, but I also knew it was going to be quite a tough bike. Lucy Gossage had both the rain and reputations against her, but the underdog was up for the fight and holding the 90-second gap to the leader. I mean, I tend to work off the other athletes around me, um, and I think the first half of the bike, there was no one, I didn't see anyone. So I think that was probably quite hard, and I maybe didn't go as hard as I could. There was no one to see, it was a proper time trial. She might not have seen many other riders, but the locals, regardless of the conditions, were out in force in every town to welcome and cheer on the riders. Keith Duffy giving them extra reason to find their voices as he rode towards a three-hour ten bike split. Compatriot Cummins finished the ride in two hours 13 in second place, just three minutes behind Agros, who was already on the flat and scenic half-marathon run. With Simcoe losing time behind Cummins, the Irishman was in second place and only looking forward now. Women's leader Rachel Joyce was looking over her shoulder, though. She came into transition two just 90 seconds ahead of the strong runner she had feared pre-race, Lucy Gossage. But would Gossage be able to get those fast legs flying today? My feet were numb from they were so cold that it, it was slightly different because until you can feel your feet again, I think you don't really know what you're doing with them. Joyce was getting her feet ready to run the 13.1 miles while Gossage was closing. So she ran out just as I got in and I, I was completely shocked. I, yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of assumed she'd have probably 10 minutes or something at, at the end of the bike. But um, yeah, and I, I'd never really been in that situation before, so I didn't really know how to respond. It wasn't something that I'd thought about happening. The headwind was so strong, you feel like you're crawling. I didn't really know how to, whether to try and go off really quick or just run my own run and, and see what happens. But on a blustery day in Ireland, Gossage was finding that the unthinkable was at least imaginable. Join us to see if Joyce can hold on after the break. We're willing to die, I swear to God, we're willing to die for our homes. On the day the mass eviction starts on Dale Farm, Britain's largest traveller site, dispatches investigates the controversial relations between gypsies, their neighbours and the law. Gypsy Eviction, the fight for Dale Farm, tomorrow at 8 on 4. Here on Channel 4, we like to remember the good bits. Yeah, well, he's bent. Yeah. Good the endless positivity. <laughs> Hold that thought. Boundless camaraderie. I did it. <laughs> and our continuous quest. I've got, like, an extra little hole. Right. To making one's life a tiny bit better. Fantastic. It just falls apart. Is it supposed to fall apart? <laughs> In fact, we like to think we put a bit of life... My sainted art, look at that! ...into lifestyle. Catch up with all your favourite Channel 4 moments only on 4OD. I'm getting excited now thinking about it, really. It's going to be an amazing event. Yeah, but, you know, it'll all come down if I've done the preparation, won't it? I have. I have tried sheepdog handling, and it's really difficult. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. I can't wait to meet Guy Martin. I've got him down as a... a maverick. And I can do... 
But that's, that's my cracker. That's, 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 that's about as good as it gets. So it's going to be a, a pretty souped-up version of what you might have seen before. A border collie can understand 200 English words. I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't believe you, <clears throat> but I don't believe you. The World Sheepdog Trials 2011 concludes tonight at 7 on More 4. So far, it's been the perfect performance by Mike Agros in the Ironman 70.3 Ireland. He was three minutes quicker than anyone else on the bike, which raises the question of whether he can hang on, but there's no sign of him fading, and those like Cummins who are chasing are starting to show the pain. Three months without injury running, which is pretty rare for Cummins. But he's got company, and it comes in the form of Simcoe, the Slovakian. 10 seconds slower than Cummings on the bike. He threw away another 30 seconds in the transition. And despite the fact that he's making life hard for himself, he is running very, very well. He's a sub three hour marathon runner. And it looks as though he might be able to chase down Mike Agros should the Swiss athlete have a failure. A long, long way to go. And as this race goes on, it gets tougher and tougher. As you can see from the profile, it's a very flat course. This is all about leg speed and, of course, mental application. They'll get a chance to see exactly where the opposition are. And they'll get a chance to see where the ladies are lying. Joyce still leading, but now only 40 metres in front of Gossage. What a brilliant run from Gossage. Five, six seconds is all that Joyce has in hand. Comes through the feeding station. Hydration, absolutely essential. Just one big gulp and away she goes. This is going to be very tough for her. She suffered a bad injury in 2010. Has recovered from that, but you just wonder how long the after effects go on. And we're about to find out how tough she is because Lucy Gossage who on paper should not be anywhere near her, is about to come past and put pressure on the favourite. Gossage looking very smooth, and I think she's trying the old trick of pushing the pace when she goes past. She wants to send a message to Joyce, and Joyce is not responding. The gap, one metre, two metres, three metres... And Gossage, who only started triathlon in 2006, if she can keep this pace going, will be on for a famous victory. If Lucy Gossage had permitted herself to dream of a moment like this today, she'd been keeping that to herself. I just saw that I was very gradually gaining on her, so I just thought I'd do my own run and then try and look good when I go past her. <laughs> I think I had a minute on her at the last out and back, maybe a little bit more. So, I, you know, there's two miles to go. I thought anything can happen in two miles. So I didn't look back. She still had a reason to look back, though. Unlike Agros, who only had to make sure the cap was... just so for the finish line glory. In three hours, 50 minutes and 12 seconds, a true champion. The strategy for today is to uh, push full on the bike, and after bike, okay, it's good legs, uh, we run, and uh, yeah. Weren't well, worried at any time about anyone catching you from behind? No, no, no. He was still milking the moment long before Simcoe took silver five and a half minutes later. The Slovak's patriotism only exceeded by that of Cummins, who received the most rapturous welcome yet in third. Oh, absolutely delighted. It was tough, you know. But it was the same for everyone. No one had an easy ride out there. Came off the bike and felt pretty good. You know, first 10k was easy. But uh, like, I suffered then for a good 7 or 8k. And once the finish line was in, was inside, I started to feel good again. Switzerland, Slovakia, Ireland getting the medals in the men's. But it's going to be Lucy Gossage from Cambridge who takes the women's title for England. What a brilliant performance by her. And she just can't believe it. Outstanding, quite outstanding. She swam well, she cycled brilliantly, but the running once again has been her forte. And why not celebrate? This sort of thing doesn't happen very often in your life. What a step up from her performance in Wimbledon. She is the Galway champion and she's taken the scalp of Rachel Joyce.
I mean, I'm super amazed. Like, I, I did think I felt quite good, but Rachel's, you know, Rachel's such a good athlete. I, I just thought I'm racing second. So I just thought, give it a go and see. <laughs> the crowd was amazing, but oh my God, I cannot believe that. <laughs> Coming in third in the women's event, Sharisa Wernick from USA. That's a good performance from her and a good performance from over 2,000 athletes racing today. Many still out on the tracks through the Spanish arch. Always nice to see the local features built in the 16th century. Big applause for Keith Duffy, a boy's own member. And what a good day's work from him, racing, of course, for Irish Autism Action. So far, so good. So far, so good. So great camaraderie. Everybody's so supportive. Support is amazing. Not quite as talkative as he was at the start of the day, but you can understand that through the drink stops. Volunteers doing a great job today, and so is this man, Ernesto Antonio, a man who had a heart replacement 12 years ago and he races today in memory of his donor. Well, fabulous scenery, it always uh, takes away some of the pain. Duffy, who's used half of his energy, doing the thumbs up on his way round. Can't wait for a point. Well, whatever it takes to keep you going, and if it's a pint of something Irish, that will go down very nicely. This is where it's all about your mental strength because some of these runners are in so much pain. Others just joyful that they're within spinning distance of the finish line. Those last few metres, the most joyful. John Fagan coming across the line, one, two, five. Good work from him. Everyone has their own story to tell, and Mark Halligan certainly will remember this one. Mary Murphy, exhausted after her effort. 459, that's Barry feeling. And here comes David Gillespie. Another five meters, and he wouldn't have made it. There'll be a few aching limbs tomorrow. But this is something he can be very, very proud of. Never again. Ever. Until next year. The pain will soon be forgotten. They'll be signing on the dotted line for next year. Here comes Ernesto Antonio. What an advert for modern medicine. And what a great reason for carrying a donor card. Runner after runner, they cross the line. And Keith Duffy has made it as well. You may know him from Boys Own, you may know him from Coronation Street. But today he's proved that he is some athlete. He's done it in under six hours. It was tough, I'm not going to lie, it was tough, you know. The swim was very rough out there, you know. I'm not a great swimmer, I was frightened at times, but I got through that. The cycle was very wet, rain came down, it didn't make it any easier. I got through that. The run was the toughest part, but... You know, I just, I got there. All I saw today was people full of encouragement and support from the athletes right through to the, uh, to the spectators. An absolutely amazing, amazing feeling. And I'm so proud to be Irish. And I'm so proud that we've welcomed so many countries over to participate in this event in our country. Because they will see proper com camaraderie and friendship and support. It's great. That's yeah, brilliant. So completing this race, now what's next? <laughs> I'm going to have a pint of Guinness. 967, that's Keith Ryan. And this is an iconic Iron Man image, the Blaze Man roll. The first Iron Man 70.3 Ireland has been a massive success. Even the weather came good in the end. The pros have got the headlines, but 2,000 athletes have got memories that will last all the way through to next year's race. Come in.
Four, the place to be after the night before. There you are. What are you doing? Matt? Just writing the show. Just quickly here. Oh, it would be really quick. We're, lit we're about to go on. Ah, uh, don't worry. It doesn't take a second. I'm just adding some finishing touches. Um, attractive girl enters and asks me out for dinner. Hey, Matt. Are you free for dinner? I'm paying. Matt turns her down callously, open brackets. He does this because he can. It makes him feel powerful and taller, close brackets. No, thank you, Gemma. I'd rather eat my own font. But